In this video, we'll look at the 10 steps you can take right now to find the perfect art style for your game or any other creative project. If you look at a painting or a drawing, you can see that this painting is drawn by this famous artist because they have a personal style that they apply on that painting. So the art style is kind of like the look and the feel of your game. And you can have a very unique art style that will set your game apart, but it's a conscious choice. It's a conscious choice that you're making. You want your game to look like this. Or if you don't make a choice, it will just end up looking like something that you didn't even think about. And that's not a way you want to go. If you make choices regarding your art style that enhances the game's feel, it will enhance the overall game. So the first thing to create an art style is of course to know your game. What genre is it? What's the story? What's the audience? Once you know what your game is, you can figure out what kind of art style would fit this game. A good example is The Walking Dead. Those games are inspired by the comic book by the same name. So they decided to go with a comic book art style, which makes perfect sense. It's also targeted towards an older audience and most of the fan base are already comic book fans. So it makes perfect sense that they would go with that art style. Everything is a copy of a copy. And that might sound strange, but hear me out. When you are finding the art style for your game, it's important that you look at references. You have to look at what other games look like, what kind of mood do you want in your game, maybe it's about prison, and what does the prison actually look like? What are the colors that are used? What are the shapes that are used? All these shapes and colors will help you define an art style for your game. Of course, you want something that is unique, but it's almost impossible to create something that hasn't been created before. Maybe they didn't create a game in that art style, but that art style might be popular in another medium. It's good to get inspired and it's good to find reference. And that reference will help you evolve your own art style. It doesn't have to look the same, but it can be inspired by it. Like Team Fortress is inspired by Line Dagger. As with any other subject, it's important to fail a lot because then you know it's not that route you want to go. Maybe try out some shapes that you wouldn't try out otherwise. Maybe try black and white and try a really colorful game, of course within what fits for your game. But trying out things is the greatest way to kind of define the path that you want your game to look. Just jump into it and see what works and what doesn't work. Maybe some happy accidents happen where you find out, okay, this was not intentionally, but looks great in the game, so continue doing more of that. You know, over and over again I say, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. Give it your own personal twist. I know you probably have things that you like a lot that other people maybe don't like as much, but it's okay because that will make it stand out. For example, Tim Burton, he likes these uh, characters that kind of look sad, but also has a very big personality and are very relatable, even though in other movies they might have been the bad guy in their, his movies, they're like what you feel empathy for. So try to explore what kind of things do you like yourself and that will also help you create a personal brand for your game. It's almost like the style that you choose for your game can be evolved and you can make a whole series of that type of games. Kinda of like Camp Sancho are doing, they're making like exploration games with a cartoony but very well defined look that has vibrant colors and nice characters to look at. An important thing to keep in mind is uh, this affordable design style you're going with. Because if you're making something realistic, you'll probably have to do a lot of detail work and make sure that it looks right in this world. And that could be really a time consumer. The same thing if you go for something that's stop motion. Stop motion would require you to make the models physically and then create them with animations and get them into engine afterwards and what about lights and all this kind of stuff it's a very demanding process and of course it will look ultra cool if you do it but can you afford it sometimes limitations can be a bad thing but in this case they can lead to creativity so if you put limits on yourself it might help you out if you decide okay i can only make this game from boxes like the game thomas was alone it was a great game it's hard to replicate that now because he did it he took that art style and made it cool what i would suggest is that you set up some limitations for yourself maybe you can't use textures maybe you can only use crooked angles so there's a lot of things that you can do 
contrast is important because if you make something black and white, if you suddenly make a scene with colors, it will enhance the whole feeling of the colored scene. It's a perfect way to lead your audience into what should they feel and how should they conceive this piece that you're making. What is the progression that's happening in your game? Maybe it's a really sad moment and you want to kill me that. You can use uh, desaturated colors or you can use more grounded shapes if you want something that's more quiet and happy. You can use round shapes if you want them to be friendly and cozy. Or you can use spike, spiky shapes if you want it to be dangerous and you can switch between those. You can also use like a lot of crookedness and then combine that with something that's very straight and aligned. There's lots of opportunities and there's so much to explore. When you've been working through all these things, in the end you will end up with a guide for your art style. And maybe it's something in your head, but you know that, okay, this is supposed to look like this, or this is supposed to look like this. And that's what the art director's job is, to make sure that all the concepts and the character designs, they fit within the same art style. And that's also very important, that it all has a coherency and fits together in this world that you're creating. So make sure that you don't suddenly go out on a tangent. It needs to be believable and needs to be grounded in the style that you set already. All the things will be combined into a style. And if you're working on a bigger game or a movie or something like that, they will have an art direction which has a big guide, guide for how the style should be. And try to think the same way because once you have these rules, it's easier to follow. Once it becomes a habit, you will go quicker to create assets and just plop them in your game. As a bonus, when you're making games, you have the issue that all games are hard to sell because there's so many of them. It's an overflowing market. So you need to make your art style selling the game. It should stand out. It should be unique. You should make it go pow. I have an assignment for you. I would just love to hear what art styles that you were really impressed with in games. Type them down below and I will for sure comment on your comment. Don't just do something because everybody else is doing it. And by this, I mean, don't do pixel art because there's so many pixel art games. Don't do low poly art for the same reasons. And I see so many games that look like this because it's a popular art style. If you do that, your game will just look like everybody else's game. You could do it with a twist on it and that could make it something beautiful. But really consider it before you go into that. Don't do what's just in your comfort zone. It's important to challenge yourself and try to do something that you haven't done before. Please don't make it realistic with muddy colors. Why? Well, there's so many of them already. Is it a shooter? Okay, then it should be muddy realistic. It sucks because there's so many opportunities that are missed with this approach. Don't just copy another game. It's okay to get inspired, but do your own thing. It also sucks when you see somebody put so much effort into something and it just looks exactly the same as another project. I hope some of these tips can help you in your journey to create amazing games. These are more guidelines rather than rules. See you later gamers.